Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge, the Bugman, and I'm coming to you from Bugman headquarters right here in the studio. And today, yeah, we're going there. We're going to talk about murder hornets. This is ridiculous. All right, look, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman, and they call me the Bugman because I go out and I bring a ton of cool bug fun to you. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. right here. All right, now look, we're talking about murder hornets. I did not want to get into this. I did not want to engage this. This is a quagmire that way too many people are getting dragged down into, and... And I'm, I'm telling you right now, man, we all got to take three steps back. We got to be a lot smarter about what we're reading and what we're interpreting on social media. And I need everybody to just relax. All right. All right. Here's how this plays out. I'm going to do this. This is this this broadcast is coming to you in, in two sections, if you will. The first section is going to be straightforward, hard fact coming at you. I'm going to tell you probably everything you need to know to calm your ills. Um, I'm also going to then follow up with a timeline of events that has taken place from about August of 2019 to February of 2020 that involve events that have to do with Asian giant hornets. So let's get started, shall we? All right. Um, Okay, first and foremost, we need to stop referring to these things as murder hornets. Um, if, if, you're, if you're looking at your social media and a post comes up and it has the word murder with the word hornet, you need to swipe and move on. All right? Just do it. Just do it. That is is a misleading post. Okay? I, I, I need to thank the New York Times for launching this thing. This is best I can tell, this is where this thing originated. Straight out of the New York Times. And you know what, man? Major media outlets, corporate, you know, moguls, and really narcissistic individuals are going to attach the word murder onto a hornet and launch it into social media for very few reasons, none of which have anything to do with education or inspiration or anything good for the public. Um, this thing was launched specifically to frazzle the nerves and get a bunch of attention and get a whole bunch of ratings and go doubly viral and all the things that folks out here in social media are helping it do. Stop sharing that post. You're not helping anybody. If you're sharing it, you're hurting the public. You're hurting the cause that me and a lot of other, you know, entomologists are out there trying to do. We're... The last thing we're going to do is promote misleading information about any insect, especially one that you knew the New York Times decided to call a murder hornet. That is wrong. Okay? So stop sharing that post right now. Do us all a favor. Thank you. Okay? Um, the next thing we're going to do, we need to make sure we address these things as they are. They're not a murder hornet. They're an Asian giant hornet. Hornet. Asian giant hornet. Nothing about murder going on there. Okay? Asian giant hornet. I'm going to say that over and over because I want it to sink in. Okay? A lot of repetitious in today. A lot of repetition in today's broadcast because I want to make sure some of these things sink in. I want to impact enough into you folks to let you folks understand that we need to slow this bus down because it's already going off the cliff. Okay? Let's just stop sharing that post. Okay, social media bug hype is a big problem for people like me. When I'm going out to schools and churches and libraries and birthday parties and all those cool places talking and teaching people about insects, the last thing I want to have to do is address the scary white fuzzy caterpillars or the kissing bugs or the spotted lantern fly hype 
or the turnaround and now we're going to be dealing with an entire year of murder hornets um we need to we need to just stop man um we are all way smarter than this we're all way more capable of looking at a blatant misleading headline on social media and recognizing what it is stop freaking out about dangerous harmful and deadly bugs and spiders they're not like that they're not coming to get you the asian giant hornet is not coming to a neighborhood near you anytime soon unless you may live in washington or british columbia and then maybe it might be in a neighborhood near you but still probably not. So let's move on, all right? I can stand on this all day. I don't want to do that. Um, the next thing I want to address, these, these hornets are not from China. Stop that ridiculous claim, all right? They're not Chinese hornets. They're not loaded with coronavirus. Um, yeah, it's gotten that bad. People are actually claiming that the, the hornets were launched with the virus in order to stop. You know, people like that need to get off the bus. They just need to leave because that's not cool. All right. The, the hornets are not from China. So if somebody's claiming they're from China, swipe and move on or take the 10 minutes of your busy day and try to educate a person who probably doesn't want to hear anything other than what's in their own head. All right. Not from China. They're Asian giant hornets. They're coming from South Korea and they're coming from Japan. Simple enough, not China. Next, all right, British Columbia and Washington State are the only places, the only places in North America where these things have been found, okay? Not Delaware, not New Can North Carolina, not Connecticut, not Pennsylvania, not Florida, not Illinois, and certainly not Texas and Arizona. Any post that states these things are being found anywhere other than Washington State or British Columbia, that's in Canada, okay? Northwest, Northwest United States. Any post coming at you claiming otherwise, you need to swipe and move on because the odds are, Vegas odds are way, way with the fact that that is bogus stuff, all right? The latest one is some big hype out of Illinois. That is dated 2012, man. Stop sharing this stuff. Stop, stop making claims that are completely unconfirmed, uns unsubstantiated. Somebody said they saw one of those things back in 2012 in Illinois, and, and some media outlet grabbed it and ran with it and, and mentioned that it was not confirmed and then spent the next 12 paragraphs telling all about the, the hornet. What is up with that, man? Stop sharing those things. Just all right, next. I'm getting a little hyped up here. <laughs> next, okay. Um, how did these hornets come to the U.S.? Um, that's a big question. That's a good question. Now, here's what I did. In order, to, in order to find you all of this cool information, I actually called people. I called people in Washington State. I called people from the Washington State Department of Agriculture. And I was going to call people from the Washington State University until I found out that those two entities actually share and freely, regularly share information. That doesn't happen in most places. They do. And because of that, I made one phone call to, to somebody from the Department of Agriculture in Washington State, and I got all the latest and greatest information, and I'm gonna bring that straight at you. Okay, so other than my lecture and, and, and my soapbox about bad social media and narcissistic people, let's, let's back down and let's get to, to the hard facts, okay? Um, they really don't know how the Asian giant hornet got into the United States, uh, let alone British Columbia, okay? Um, they're in both places. They do, they do know that. And I say that respectively at this point. I'll explain in a little bit. They, they have had events in both of those places, um, but they're not quite sure how they got in because there's three or four theories 
as to how they got in, but the most likely one is the fact that they probably came in on a shipping container. And that would have been a hibernating queen, probably arrived on a container on a ship that came into one of the ports, got delivered probably to its destination, and that queen was subsequently accidentally, accidentally released and therefore was able to establish a hive. That's how it works. That simple. No conspiracy theories and no coronavirus attached to it. Just a bug was brought in accidentally and it was therefore released accidentally. That is the most likely of scenarios. There are other, some other scenarios, um, the funniest of which, which the weird thing is this is actually possible. Um, in, in Asia, there is a, and, uh, sorry about this. In Asia, there's a sports drink that involves the larval juice, the larvae juice that the Asian giant hornet produces that supposedly is, you know, good and, and good for athletes and blah, blah, blah. So there's a theory that somebody may have been trying to create an organic sport drink, but I don't even, I, I'm not, I really don't want to push that because that is such an unlikely scenario, but I still find it funny. You know, leave it up, you leave it up to the, to the Asians to find, you know, Asian giant hornet juice as being good for athletes. You know, right about now there's athletes and sports freaks going, hmm, yeah. Um, let's not go there, all right? Let Washington and British Columbia deal with their problem. Don't you start getting funny ideas about that, okay? So, let's, let's, let's all just come to a basic um, conclusion that these things probably most likely um, almost definitely came from a shipping container delivered to Washington and or British Columbia and they were subsequently released. All right, now, again, when you start going into your social media and you start seeing these posts, if it has the word murder attached and it's about these hornets, delete it, remove it, swipe it, don't share it. It's not gonna be the information anybody needs, okay? Don't go there, okay? Next. Um, and this is this is this is important now. So stay with me. the The Asian giant hornets are dangerous. These are these hornets. They are packing an anger issue that is unmatched, and they are also packing a sting and a venom that is very very potent and effective. These are hornets that go out and attack and kill entire hives of bees. Very scary and dangerous insect. There's no doubt about that. But again, they're still stuck up in Washington and British Columbia. Nowhere else. So relax. Okay? Take a deep breath. Relax. All right? Good. All right. Now, Asian giant hornets cause 50 deaths a year in Japan. 50 deaths in Japan per year. I did a little bit of research. Google. And I found out that bees, wasps, ants, and hornets in the United States are causing between 40 and 90 deaths per year. Why are you zooing out over a big hornet that's stuck up in the northwestern United States when they're going to do presumably less immediate death and destruction here in the United States than what our bees are already doing. All right? Relax. Okay? Now, there's a very, very low risk that these hornets, the Asian giant hornets, are going to uh, leave Washington and British Columbia through uh, transportation. Um, they, they, don't, they don't work that way. Uh, they, they don't they're not like spotted lanternfly where they'll hang on to the side of a truck and drive 100 miles away. That's not how these, these insects don't work like that. They focus on a hive community. They focus on going out and attacking other bee hives. They focus on staying together as a pack and as a group. That's how it works. They don't spread themselves out you know, in the same way. The queens, I guess, eventually could, and that is a concern. But at the same time, for the moment, there's no risk of these things being transported 
um, necessarily in that aspect from Washington or British Columbia. They're kind of homebodies, and let's hope they stay that way, okay? Simple enough. Um, there is a very big concern that they may spread um, because of their food, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit too. Um, they're chasing they're chasing honeybee hives, uh, which means they may actually move and be able to spread themselves down into Northern California. Um, certainly, they're already in Washington, so we can suspect they may show up in Oregon at some point. Um, look, that's an environmental thing because the environment of the Northwestern United States, uh, as well as obviously British Columbia, are perfect for these hornets. Perfect for these hornets. So that's what that's what they do. All right. The odds are they're never going to show up in Texas or Arizona because one, it's way too hot and dry. That's like that's like Mars and the Earth difference there. Okay. So relax, man. They're stuck where they are for now, and hopefully they're going to stay that way. Um, but because they're going to because they expect them to chase honeybees down into possibly Northern California. Uh, suspect you know they're going to turn up in Oregon at some point, and obviously they're already in Washington State. Um, that is a concern for a couple things. These particular hornets are targeting managed honeybee hives. That means they're not going after wild honeybees yet that we know of. They are in fact chasing and targeting the managed hives. Those are the hives that are kept by beekeepers. Those are the hives that are you know managed by people. So. Those bees um, are way more susceptible and way less able to defend themselves, apparently. So the, the, the hornets know they're an easy target, and they target the managed hives. Um, this is where there's high risk to uh, the apiary industry, because a lot of, a lot of beekeeping industries ship their bees all over the U.S. and ship their bees all over the place to go pollinate farms and orchards and different things. And if they're shipping their bees up to Washington State or British Columbia or Oregon or Northern California, and now they have to worry that the Asian giant hornet is going to wipe out their hives, that's a problem to those industries. They may decide to not ship bees there. If they opt to not ship bees, that has the ripple effect that that will now affect the blueberry industry, the apple, Washington apple industry, and obviously the almond industry you know, industry down in California. So there is a viable concern for an economic impact, but I would venture to say that there's probably less of a concern for death and carnage at, at this point than there is for the you know the prospect of economic impact. Um, these bees do come in contact with people in Japan. 50 people a year dying from them. Or the, I'm sorry, the hornets are coming in contact with people in Japan. 50 people a year. So so they do cause, you know, they do have um, the possibility to cause problems. Um, you know, Japan and South Korea and some of the countries where they've moved and migrated into have, uh, they have procedures in effect. They have teams that are going out and hunting these hives down. They have eradication teams that go in and they use everything from flamethrowers to, uh, in some cases, they actually go out and they, you know, tear apart the hives and they collect the brood and then they take those out and those are a delicacy, of course, in, in Asia. So they're going to keep those and eat those. Um, but they destroy as many of the adults and hives and the queens as they can um, in the process to keep them from getting into those urban areas and, and reduce that human contact. Okay, good. Um, again, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know what the the you know estimated or expected human impact from these bee, these hornets in Washington or British Columbia is because they're still so new. Okay, they're still so fresh. The data's still coming in. All tired of hearing that, aren't we? But the, the the data and the research is still coming in on these things that that they're still not sure how much of a huge human impact they're going to have. So relax, man. Um, if you're not living in the northwestern U.S., you're good for now, probably for a long time. Okay, zero risk of of transport spread. Um, so don't worry about them being sh don't worry about the hornets being shipped back. Uh, for instance, if they hit one of the hives uh, up in Washington. Uh, they kill off those hives or whatever, and then those companies, those a those apiary companies, have to go up and they ship back their hives. They're not shipping back Asian giant hornets. 
zero risk of that happening. Relax, okay? Um, now, there are two strains of the Asian giant hornet in that region of the Northwest US, British Columbia as well. Okay, two different strains, one from Japan and one from Korea, not from China, okay? Two different strains also starts to ask other questions. Now that, that offers a suspect that there has been two separate um, occurrences where these things have managed to find their way in you know, to those locations. So yeah, I, I, I get it. Um, the Japanese strain is generally up in British Columbia and the South Korean strain is what's turning up in Washington state. So that that has yet to be figured out. I'm sure they're gonna they'll they'll backtrack those. They will figure them out eventually. I'm sure uh, the DNA is proving that there's two different strains, and the DNA is proving that they're they're in separate areas right now. Um, whether they start to mix match and cross over the border, they're bugs, man. They can fly. So there's a real good opportunity they're gonna they're gonna move around a little bit. Um, just probably not to Illinois and not to North Carolina or Delaware or Pennsylvania. So. Relax. Oh, all right. Now, the Japanese honeybees have built up a behavioral resistance to Asian giant hornets. Um, and it involves, <laughs> it involves, involves, they crowd up on them and they vibrate and they do all kinds of fun things and they literally can cook the hornet um, by doing so. At the same time, um, by ganging up on them, they can subdue the attack on the hive uh, and force the hornets off. They, those Japanese honeybees have developed that system to do that. Um, there's speculation as to whether the European honeybees here in the U.S., uh, can actually fend these things off because thus far our European honeybees, which are a non-native honeybee, all right? The United States does not have a native honeybee, okay? They were brought in from Europe. So, you know, there's also, there's an added soapbox on another non-native insect that's in the U.S., but for the sake of the Asian giant hornet, we'll stick to topic, okay? So the Asian giant hornet, if it, if it swarms and when it swarms on the European honeybee, the European honeybee has not developed that behavioral system, that behavioral resistance to, to offensively, you know, and defensively, I guess you could call it, attack back to fend those hornets off. So the hornets attack the nest, they create a swarm effect, and the honeybees will come out of the, the nest to, or the hive to defend the hive. The Asian giant hornets will kill every single one of those, you know, honeybees and simply by biting their head off. They got huge pinchers. Those right there. And they will bite off the heads of the honeybees. They let them lay. They don't take the adult honeybees with them. Then they enter the hive and they will pull all the brood and they, exp they extract all the brood out of the hive. And then they fly those back and they feed them to the giant hornet, uh, Larva, the, the 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 grubs, the larva, whatever you want to pref you know prefer to call them. Um, here's the cool thing, at least I think it's pretty cool about Asian giant hornets. The larvae then in turn will feed the adults. Okay, the adults themselves do not do not eat those insects. Do not eat you know whatever they're out there gathering, um, brood larvae, whatever the case is. The adults do not eat those. They take them back to their young, and the young then will extract a larval larvae juice, and that's what the adult giant hornets are eating, okay? They're not eating the insects themselves. It's all about feeding their kids, okay? Much the same way as our, our mud daubers and our, you know, the spider wasps that, that, that are here. Those wasps themselves do not eat the spiders, they take the spiders back to their, to their, to their tubes and they fill them with spiders and then they put some eggs in there and the, and the, and the wasp larvae are going to eat those spiders. The, the, spi the wasps themselves then go out and they feed on flowers for crying out loud. So don't, you know, don't get these mixed up. Okay. These are very specific and even their, even their, their family system, their hive system is pretty cool. The way the larvae are feeding the adults. 
Um, I think that's amazing. Bugs just do that to me. Sorry. Okay. So no resistance necessarily or, or essentially from our European honeybees. Big resistance coming out of the Japanese honeybees. You know why? Because Asian giant hornets have been in Japan and South Korea and have been in Asia forever. And those insects that they're attacking, those honeybees that they're attacking have built up and developed resistance for it. Simple stuff, man. Okay. Simple stuff. All right. So, we're running out of time, and I still want to run down a timeline real quick. Um, so, look, guys, there it is for you. Look, I, I can't emphasize enough uh, how important it is. If you're running your social media today and you see the words murder hornet, please, please do not share those posts. They are misleading. Please don't do it. Okay. All right, now, if you've heard enough and you're good to go, you can't take any more of my rant and of my soapbox and of my lectures, I totally understand. Guys, understand, I love you and I appreciate you. I, 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 I think it's great that so many people wanted me to step in and be some kind of spokesperson about these things. I truly, I truly hate negative bug hype on social media. Um, I defend it to an extent and then I finally take three steps back and I walk away and I ignore it after that because some people, you just can't change their minds. People love to hate bugs and insects. They truly do. They love to hate bugs and insects. And telling them that bugs and insects are good and important and necessary to this planet sometimes does not do any good at all. They don't, they don't care. They don't want to hear that. I'm fine with that. I'm not judgmental on that. I'm just saying that there are some people you just can't reach. Okay? Um, don't be one of those people, man. Don't be that kind of you know, person that rides the coattails on the narcissistic murder hornet train. Stop sharing these posts. Stop and just let's let this let's let this insect die the horrible death it's supposed to die somewhere in Washington or British Columbia, not on your Facebook page. All right. Stop sharing this stuff. Okay? All right. I am all done with you unless you really want the timeline. I'm gonna give you five more minutes here. That's about all I got. Um, folks, if you're checking out now, I appreciate it, and I will catch you, uh, I'll catch you on, uh, Friday. I'll catch you on Friday at 1 p.m. Okay, simple stuff. All right, guys, so you get it. Um, you know, hey, I, 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 I appreciate you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging with me. Um, I want to go through the time frame real quick. Um, this time frame offers some, some neat and interesting things. Um, those of you who are still with me and still interested, that's very cool. Um, I appreciate it. So let me get let me get down to it. Um, the first event for Asian giant hornet um, happened in September of 2019 in British Columbia, Canada. Okay, that particular hive, because it was a, it was a hive, it was killed in September, um, and those were confirmed to be the Japanese strain of Asian giant hornet. Okay, so that's up in that's up in British Columbia. Now the second event was in October of 2019, also British Columbia. So about a month later, somebody took a picture of a live Asian giant hornet. The investigation started. They went there, even though the hornet had been disposed of, it was killed, and then and then get, they got rid of it. Um, they were able to confirm that. So they looked at where the picture was taken and stuff like that. So they, they're they confident that was legit. And that was September, now October, both British Columbia. Third event, October 2019. This happens in Washington State. There was a report of a bee kill. Um, and then they went out and they investigated. Now, they couldn't confirm because there were no bees on site. There were no hornets on site. But there was a ton of dead bees. And they looked as though they had been killed by the Asian giant hornet. So they, they wrote that one off as non-confirmed, but highly suspect for Asian giant hornet. Very important. Fourth event, November 2019, again, Washington, about a month later. Again, Washington, report of a bee kill. This time they got there, they confirmed it. Um, you know, everything was good. Everything's tight. They know for a fact that that was an Asian giant hornet kill. Okay, and that was in Washington State, November 2019. Fifth event. Fifth event was December of 2019, Washington State, 
Freshly dead hornet. A freshly dead hornet was discovered at somebody's front door. Um, upon further inspection and the investigation, uh, they also took a picture of a, of a live one that was flying up above them. So they had two bees, one dead, one alive, that was on film. Um, and they discovered the rain spout was probably what they were using as a watering source. And that leaves some questions open there, okay? So... There you go. Freshly dead hornet and another one was seen. Now, when they tested that particular dead hornet, it turned out to be the South Korea strain of Asian giant hornets. So now you've got the Japanese hornets hanging around up in British Columbia and you've got the Asian or you've got the South Korean strain of Asian giant hornet hanging around in Washington state. Cool. All right. Sixth event. The sixth event was February 2020 report of uh from a farmer came in that there was a large brown hornet with a big yellow head trying to attack his tractor i think that's cool but this big hornet's trying to sting his tractor uh while he's working his field um they went out and they did investigation now while doing their investigation they also discovered there was uh, a bee kill in august of 2019 right nearby as well as october in 2019 so two bee kills right there both non-confirmed because it was too you know it was too far gone um but but they're confident that that event did occur and they know there were some some big bee kills right there in the area again um that's all coming that's all coming out of uh washington state so man it's um you do the math these things have been floating around now since since august uh, effectively August of 2019 all the way up to February of 2020. Now here's a problem that, that this presents. The fact that they are um, moderately certain that there were adult giant hornets flying around in February of 2020 Although they currently do not know for a fact that there are live giant hornets flying around in Washington State or in British Columbia, the fact that they were there in February 2020 leaves a very wide margin of, of uh, suspect that they will be there, that, that they're probably somewhere nearby, that there will be more emerging out that, that you know. So... They're kind of on the they're kind of on the expectation list. They're kind of at the point where they've they're they're waiting for this to happen. They they kind of expect it to now. So even though there's no confirmed living giant hornets in the country right now, in the United States right now, they do suspect they're going to be coming um, back in and around Washington State and British Columbia. So you know what, guys, think about it. If you don't live in Washington State, and you don't live in British Columbia, Canada, um, relax, all right? Let's let this chill, man. Let's let this bug die the horrible death it needs to die in Washington State and Canada. Let's not let's not let this thing stick around off on uh, social media for very long. We gotta get we gotta get rid of these posts. The posts are misleading. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So that's the facts as good as I can get them to you guys. That's, I, I can't do any better than that. I hope that I at least, you know, quelled some of the hysteria and some of the panic going on. I hope everybody goes into this with a much better knowledge about these hornets. Again, Asian giant hornets, not from China, not carrying coronavirus, and not necessarily coming to a neighborhood near you anytime soon. Okay, guys? All right, cool. Let's get out of here, man. We're out of time. Guys, if you like what I do, if you like what you see here, you got to hit me up. Hit up my webpage, ryanthebugman.com. ryanthebugman.com. Also, you can find me on YouTube. Man, there's a ton of cool content over there, so go on over there. Hit that up. Hey, doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Please subscribe. Let me know you like what's going on over there. That way I know what to keep pushing. All right? Hit that subscribe. Check me out. Look at those videos. That's awesome. All right, guys? We got to get out of here. It's the end of the day. I got to clock out. So look, man, still an angry world. Those hornets are not the only thing that's angry out there. The world itself is pretty angry right now. So I need you guys to be well. I need you to be safe. And please, 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 let's all be kind to each other. All right, man. Angry world. All right, guys. Hey, take care. Have a great day.